Yeah, that'll be uh, June 1st. It's a Friday night. Um, and I know they've been in the Orlando area as well. We kind of have crossed paths, but we haven't had a chance yet to play with them. So we're excited for that evening. Um, we have a lot of mutual friends, obviously, in the Orlando scene, Central Florida scene. Soon, so it's going to be a good time. June 1st is Shanghai Nobbies. Uh, I think doors are at 7 or so. Nice, nice. Yeah, those guys are pretty cool. I thought they were pretty unique. I mean, there's not too many groups out there that are basically two pieces and can recreate what they do live in the studio and vice versa. So those guys are an interesting uh, interesting group, and they got catchy material. So I'm glad you guys are playing with them. I'm actually going to check them out. They're doing the House of Blues on June 9th. But uh, do you guys ever do the House of Blues? Not yet. We'd love to. We'd love to. Yeah, that's I, I that that they seem like a great place, and you know they put local bands in there and do free shows and stuff. So maybe you can talk to those guys and see how you know they went about it. I'm not sure how that whole thing works there, but that's a great place that does you know cool shit for local bands. So, but uh, you guys sure. did an um, acoustic show recently. So was that the first time you played acoustic? Oh yeah. Did it, um... April, you want to get that one? <laughs> oh, I am terrible, and I say inappropriate things, so I don't know if you want me talking for y'all. That sounds even more fun. That's, <laughs> that's... <laughs> Why is that? You can ask them at shows. I am the one that you don't want talking on the mic, because that... I get nervous, and I say some pretty messed up stuff and accidentally insult people, so I'm just going to stay quiet. <laughs> oh, that, that's what makes well, good radio. That's, you know, that's the exciting part of radio. I'm probably one of the most controversial guys out there, so I mean... <laughs> I, I've mellowed out, but I, you know, you can say whatever yeah. you want. Um, yeah, no, the acoustic show was really cool. We actually, um, we tried to do something different with our, cause you know, and we, we didn't want to do the, the typical, you know, take our songs and just play them softer. We wanted to change them and add in, show that we can play other genres too. I know we added like a little bit of Latin, like what was it, Oscar? Because I don't want to use the incorrect term and sound no, like you had know. a little bit, a little bit of salsa we put in. A little salsa the, in there, and then we had a little bit of jazz in there, and tried to, you know, do something different with it and kind of make it its own experience, as well as plugging in some like '90s covers into, you know, kind of making fun of ourselves a little bit because we're all '90s dorks. So, you know, throwing that in and doing something different and trying to make it a unique experience, different from our fully plugged in shows, was our goal. And I think I think it was it was received well. I think. Cool, cool. What covers did you guys do? That's an nothing awesome. completely. <laughs> okay, so we we kind of all right. So the very first one we did, we sang about twenty seconds of Jack and Diane over poor situation, and the whole spiel was like, wait a minute, that's wrong song. Oh no, and we like started over, you know, and then totally um, candid, totally candid. Yeah. <laughs> 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 It's like Not I guess you had to be all. there for it to be funny, but you know we did that one and we did believe it or not that old that old Duncan Sheep tune, barely breathing. Nice. And uh, we did a little piece of Santeria by uh, by uh, Sublime. Cool. And they're all just like I said, they were they were just these little little they're they're kind of like quotes, you know, because because you can't help. Okay, so. When, when you strip down, you get rid of the distortion, you get rid of the jet, you get rid of the bow, 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 you know. What you have left over is chords, and these chords are, you know, combined in a way that when you when you play them normally, they sound like normal songs. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But uh, I, I, I used to do something similar, but we would screw with the bands we were opening for. Like we, we played some shows with great white back in the day and we would play like 20 seconds of like their biggest song. And man, <laughs> they, they fucking hated us. <laughs> We'd be like, All right, well, gonna... They remembered you. I bet that's how the people remember you. Oh hate, yeah. Hate very strong. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we, I come out and I'd be like, all right, our last song, here we go. Once bitten, twice shy. We play like 20 <laughs> seconds. The guy wanted to kill me. But we wound up getting pretty much kicked off the tour. So, But it's always fun to get kicked off a tour. Especially yeah, when you're not pay. rock and roll. It's pissing somebody off. <laughs> especially yep. when you uh, paid $6,000 to be on it. And we brought more people than they did. So it's, it's always good to get kicked off. But... Uh, <laughs> 
how how was the preparation? I mean, how much rehearsal time did you guys put into the acoustic show? Well, I mean, that was there was a lot of partial. Uh, Telf was away, man. He he was uh, overseas, so we didn't really get but what one, Three. one or two <laughs> full rehearsals. One with everybody. Yeah, two with me. Yeah, so two with you, and then uh, Oscar and myself in April. I mean, what we do two by ourselves yeah. first, so. Not a lot of preparation time, um, but it was enough. So it's something we might pursue a little bit more down the road and and uh, rewrite some of the songs we think. Yeah, and you all, it, it can only get better. But let me ask you what you were doing in Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> what's legal in Amsterdam? <laughs> Just strictly being a tourist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> You guys should go over there and play. You probably get a, a good. Almost response. got uh, chased down. Almost got chased down by a prostitute in the red light districts. Almost, or you did. Quite the time. Almost. <laughs> What'd you forget? No to pictures pay? allowed, but uh, but my <laughs> girlfriend was, you know, snuck a picture in, and one of the girls opened up the doors, pointed at us. Like, Let's get out of here. <laughs> That's funny. Next alleyway. Uh, <laughs> how was the how was the smoking situation? So. The only problem I had is buying a buying a pre roll, you know. They were uh, laced with tobacco. Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't smoke tobacco, and I hit it, and everything just my world spun. Oh, <laughs> why would they do that? Not, I don't know. I I kept asking, and everyone thought I was weird for asking. Oh, I think I'd throw up. Why would you want to ruin like, it? Why like that? Why don't you do that? <laughs> That's a poor situation to be in, Telf. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I would say. I mean, but I mean, over there, I guess you could just buy buy the buds or whatever. Well, yeah, you can. Yeah, not as much as you can in the states. Yeah. In the legal states. Yeah, it's a it's it's a weird situation here, especially in Florida, because you can't even. You know, they don't allow the flowers here, so you can only get it in vape and creams and shit like that. But but Amsterdam, they've been doing it so long, they're just used to the way it's done over there, so but they got knocked out by Colorado being the weed capital, so Yeah. <laughs> what are some yeah, of the, the other, other countries? Huh? What are the some of the other things going on with you guys like shows and stuff? Is the the nineteenth the only show besides the one in St. Augustine or you got other shows planned? June 16th um, we're with uh, Kill the Sound that big, big, big metal show at the Haven O-Town Metal Meltdown O-Town Meltdown, yeah there's a lot, I mean, major major local acts on that it's it's already like I, I heard last year when they did it they actually like were at capacity at the Haven Wow. Yeah, they so. said every year it sells out. So definitely a big one we're looking forward to as well. Um, we got a pretty good lineup. It's going to be, uh, let's see here, it's the Kill the Sound, Breathing Theory, Us, I Owe Nothing, City of Stages, and Broken Silence. So it's going to be June 16th, Doors are at 7, shows at 8. Definitely going to be a great time. Um, so we're, we've are we been pretty busy this year. Uh, we actually have to turn down shows because – we're just we're you know we were busy trying to get the album out and, and finish other stuff, but that's uh, one of our shows June first, and then I mean this year alone I think we've done probably four other shows. Um, and it's funny you had mentioned Power Man Five Thousand. We were actually asked to open up and play with them, which was uh, a show we wanted to do, but Top was overseas, so we had to say no. But it was nice to be asked. So yeah, to, no, that 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 would have been a great one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's it's a good feeling, you know what I mean? We uh we get asked quite a bit, so uh, we just you know we're all pretty bu- busy, so we can't say yes to everything, even though we'd like to. Because we got to spend some time writing as well. We'll be working on our, our third EP here shortly, so we've already worked on it. We just uh, haven't finalized anything, but we have some stuff pretty close. Yeah, well, you don't really want you know to go overboard on the shows because. I mean, if you play too much in the same area, it's not. Yep. He it, it learned that. Yeah. It's, he oversaturate. <laughs> that's one of my things here in Tampa is a, a, every headliner that comes through, the same three or four bands open, and it prevents me from, <laughs> from going to the show because I'm, 
I'm tired of. It's it's not that they're bad bands. I, I want to see something else, or I'm just going to wait until the headliner goes on before I even go in, because I, there's yep. no reason for me to see the same local band seven times in a month. But I don't know. I, I guess I, I become a dick like that. I don't know. So I, I no, man. It. I think that we feel the same way about ourselves. We don't want to oversaturate. I mean, we don't expect anybody to want to, you know, come out to show, every show if you're out every weekend in the same place. So we like diversity as well. And there's plenty of local talent to go around. So there's no reason why it shouldn't be mixed up. But we're trying to get around. We want to get over to Tampa. We've got some friends that we made recently that um, want to do some shows. And we're trying to work our way up to Jacksonville as well. We're happy that we're getting back to St. Augustine. They're real hungry for music over there. And it was a great show at Shanghai. So the Copper Bone show I'm really excited for. We're going to have a good time. We're, you know, just slowly inching our way across Central Florida and up and down the East Coast. So um, it's the best way to do it, man. Are, yeah. are you uh, what's your ultimate goal? Basically, are you guys looking to score a record deal? You're looking to stay, you know, doing it yourself. What what are you guys expecting from from the new release? Are you going to shop it? Um, it's a pretty um, interesting I mean, question. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's pretty involved question. I mean, we to 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 grow our fan base, you know, and we want to make meaningful connections with everybody. Whatever allows us the freedom to make our music, while not um, trapping us inside a contract necessarily. Um, record deals, depending, uh, it depends. You know what I mean? There's a lot of what ifs. Um, each scenario can be different. And there's pros and cons to it. So, um, we foresee us probably doing a tour, um, maybe a week long tour, possibly maybe next year. We kind of talked about it. Um, Nothing set in stone. These are just, you know, as Oscar mentioned, you know, this is our, our last permutation of the band. We've only been together really kind of about a year. So yeah. still relatively new, even right. though we've been together collectively for almost two. Um, the first permutation fell apart pretty quickly just because we had some members that had to move back up north and some other stuff. And in June will be the first, will be a complete year where we played the first show together as this, this band. So we're really kind of... Defining who we are, I believe yeah. now. I'm gonna add to the to the label. The label questions. It, it's really interesting because we've been kind of beginning to talk about it among ourselves that the right label for us would be one that is interested in you know helping us helping us network and distribute. There's certain things that that we don't really feel like we need or want from a label. That you know, there's you know that misconception of people who think, okay, I'm signed, I'm set forever now, right. mm-hmm. and that's like the best way to end up in a massive amount of debt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, you got there. Uh, of all the bands that ever came on the show, you're the first one that ever you know realized that or or said anything well, to that effect that you know. It's you're going into debt. A lot of bands don't realize that. Yeah, you might get twenty five cents for every album that's sold, but you ain't getting that twenty five cents till your whole budget that was released to the band, whether it's one million dollars or fifty thousand dollars, has to be paid back before you're going to get any earnings. And you're basically that's exactly right. You're, you're basically mm-hmm. in debt. So if if the album doesn't sell, you could potentially owe that record label back whatever money was invested. It depended on the wording of your contract. That's why it's important. A lot of bands sign deals that don't even have a lawyer present, have nothing backing them up um, legally. They just think that they're going to get a record deal and they're going to be an overnight rock star. It's, it's Very few happen <laughs> like that. And nine out of ten bands are that do sign fail anyway or have miserable sales and get dropped. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're not going to become, I mean, I signed deals before too. And the shell, uh, the album got shelved because of lyrical content at the time is when they started putting parental advisory stickers on all the albums. So we had a $300,000 record recorded. It was like hair metal shit back in the day. Um, and it, and it got shelved because of that, because they were afraid to release it because of this, the sexual nature lyrics on the album. And they thought it wouldn't sell because people would be scared to put it in their store. So they didn't put it on. It's actually still a legal battle with the main songwriter to this day. Oh, wow. 
Y'all got tippered gourd. Yep, yep, yep. That's exactly what happened.